Hello, my name is Karen Belita, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm the president of the Board of Trustees for the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, and so honored to participate in the Shining Lights webinar celebrating Unitarian Universalism in Canada. The Genocide Memorial Service, which started in Edmonton back in 2009, is an event that draws people from many faiths and backgrounds. However, this event was really brought to life by one remarkable person, the Reverend Audrey Brooks of the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. Our dear Audrey has had such a wonderfully rich and giving life so far. It is impossible to fit everything into one presentation. I hope you enjoy this video, which is a mix of video clips, sound recordings, photos, and music. Some of the music was written specifically for Audrey. First, we'll hear an introduction from the 2019 Genocide Memorial Service. Then you will learn a bit more about Audrey from our recently retired minister, Reverend Brian Kiley, and through song and photos. And eventually you will learn more about the Genocide Memorial Garden and annual service. Plus, you will be given the opportunity to speak with Reverend Audrey Brooks during the question and answer portion of the Shining Lights webinar. But for now, please enjoy this presentation on Reverend Audrey Brooks and the Genocide Memorial Garden. Welcome to this place and this time so that we may share remembrances and stand as witnesses to the destruction of families and places in the world by people who have no love or compassion for humanity. My name is Audrey Brooks and I serve as chaplain at this church and I'm also on the board of the Edmonton Interfaith Center for Education and Action. And these are the two sponsors for the annual Genocide Memorial Service. Our mandate is to work for peace and to promote understanding among faith groups. And the theme for our gathering today is, we are all family. We may come from different parts of the world, be of many sizes and shapes and colors, but we have the same beginning and we have the same endings. We are sacred in our birthing, we are sacred in our living, we are sacred in our dying. Because we come from the same creator, however we define and understand and celebrate that origin. If you look at the banners in this room, you will see that the inspiration for spiritual growth in this congregation come from all of the religious resources, the faith resources that you see here. And our um, recent dedication of the Cree banner over there in uh, April brought to us the gift of the nations that were here first, the first nations and whose land we are and whose land we share and whose land we honor. I offer tobacco to Valerie as is the custom to bind our agreement for her to be with me today. And tobacco is a sacred herb, along with cedar and sweet grass and sage. And it honors Mother Earth for sharing her abundance with us. Valerie, please. As we gather here today, we respectfully acknowledge we are gathered on Treaty 6 territory the ancestral and territorial lands for diverse indigenous people, including the Cree, Assiniboine, Ojibwe, Métis, and many others, whose history, language, and cultures continue to enhance our vibrant communities. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationships with each other. Before I begin my blessing, I would like to acknowledge the National Inquiry, which has uh, recently acknowledged the missing and murdered Aboriginal women and has now classified that the murder of the Aboriginal women is now considered a Canadian genocide. I would also like to acknowledge the groups who would like an inquiry into the missing and murdered uh, Aboriginal men and boys. I humble myself before the Creator and ask for blessings 
as we remember and honor all the victims of genocide. And on behalf of the Edmonton Interfaith Center for Education and Action, I want to say two things. I want to say, first of all, that we are very proud and pleased that 11 years ago, Audrey asked us to partner with her on this incredible endeavor, this important initiative. It, it fits our mandate. We are not a peace group per se, but we are about, about learning about each other. The more we know about each other, the more we can improve the, the future, the present and the future. And secondly, I want to also say, on behalf of the board, that we are so lucky and proud and pleased to have board members like Audrey who make things happen. Effective, hardworking, passionate board members without whom these, these events wouldn't exist. And she, she chairs three of our annual events for the Interface Center, not counting this as one because it's a joint program. So hats off to Audrey for, for doing this year after year, for making us see what needs to be seen. And if every board member were on every board were like Audrey, the world would be, would be fixed. So thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brian Kiley. I've known Audrey Brooks for nearly 25 years, ever since I first arrived at the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. Audrey is the glue that holds congregations together. She's been our main pastoral visitor for almost all of those 25 years that I've known her, but she's also been part of the RE committee and the board and every other ad hoc committee. She makes sandwiches, she's made coffee, she holds people's hands. She cries with them. She is compassionate with them. And that's her special gift. Outside the church, Audrey has represented us extremely well, serving as a chaplain at the University of Alberta for several years. She's been our chief hospital visitor. Um, she served on the board of the Edmonton Center for Interfaith Center for Education and Action, and she sat with me in the Capital Region Interfaith Housing Initiative for several years. She is a recipient of the Salvador Prenzolores Award for Social Justice in this city. She's just tireless, and she's always caring, and she's always listening. And it's because of that that the Genocide Memorial Garden and Service came to be. Audrey has an ability to reach across cultures, to make contacts, to reach across religions, and to touch people where they live, in their grief, in their compassion, in their need to make the world a better place. And so the garden was developed. And in typical Audrey fashion, it was done all by her quietly going up and asking people to help her do this or do that. And now it's come a very big thing. I support her project and I absolutely adore this woman. She is amazing. Thank you. My name is Scott Harrison, he, him, his. You may have seen me in some of the previous photos as I am often carrying the banner, 
to many of the rallies Audrey attends. I was born into the Unitarian Church and Audrey was my junior high school teacher. She has been a beloved part of my life for decades. Let me tell you a bit more about Audrey. She has a Master of Divinity degree, which she received in 1985 from Bangor Theological Seminary. To do this, she took a sabbatical from her job as a school teacher. At Sunday services in the church, she is the queen of hugs, making everyone feel special and welcome. On our soup Sundays, Audrey can be relied on to bring a delicious soup. And we must mention that Reverend Audrey Brooks raised five children on her own as a divorced mother. She also has 13 grandchildren, 13 great-grandchildren, and one great-great-grandchild. This woman has room in her heart for many people. Audrey's community is a very large one, well beyond the bounds of her home congregation or even the UU church itself. She has friends everywhere, and she draws on them for her genocide memorial service. As you have heard previously, Audrey is the founder of the Genocide Memorial. In fact, for its first 10 years, the service was held in her front yard. She had created a dry creek bed made of stones in the yard, and that inspired the central ritual of her service each summer. People would place a stone in the creek bed with a name on the stone of a person or group who had died by violence. The stone might also name an event that holds painful memories for the person placing it. Each person then has the opportunity to share with the audience the painful memory that the stone represents. The diverse audience has had over 100 people when we were meeting in person, and now we are lucky enough to have online services where we've been able to have intergenerational, international guest speakers and audience members from around the world all coming together to laugh and cry together. Let's hear from Audrey now on how the Genocide Memorial Garden started. Some years ago, I learned, even though I was raised Catholic, that my Hungarian grandmother was Jewish. And this led myself and my daughter to take a trip in 2005 to visit Jewish sites in Hungary, uh, Prague, Munich, Frankfurt, and Vienna. We also visited the former Nazi concentration camps and Dachau and Theresienstadt. The Holocaust that killed 6 million Jews was now part of our family heritage. When we came home, I decided to dedicate part of the dry riverbed landscape in my front yard to the Holocaust. I was looking out the front window at the riverbed when I heard a CBC newscast reporting the Congolese army raping virgin women and little girls to have power in battle and to protect themselves from AIDS. And I could not believe this. It was 2008. In the Congo today, there are an estimated 200,000 female survivors of sexual violence, victims, victims of an ongoing low-level war. Armed groups use sexual violence as a tactic to assert control over natural resources in parts of that country. After crying over this, I recalled issues in Somalia, Darfur, Bosnia, Serbia, Vietnam, Guatemala, Hiroshima, and so many other places where innocent people died because of war, violence, deliberate ethnic cleansing, and so I decided to dedicate the garden to all victims of genocide. The garden remains as a place of remembrance to victims of genocide, year in and year out. We have these ceremonies. I'm fine with people visiting it whenever they need to, to come and stop by. They read the names on the stones and in some cases leave flowers. Or, or pray. The creation of the garden led to the annual service continuing over the many years. It moved from my garden to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton in nine, 2019 because it needed a larger space. And of course, in 2020, it moved online because of the pandemic and became a national CUC service. The integrity of the service has been maintained throughout the changes. 
it's important that the special event continue. The stones in the memorial garden cry out against the murder of innocent people. There are ways to resolve conflict other than the mass destruction of human beings in the name of politics and greed and exploitation. For telling ourselves and others that evil is inevitable while good is impossible, may we stand corrected. <coughs> God of our mixed up, tragic, aspiring, doubting, and insurgent lives, help us to be as good in our hearts as we have always wanted to be. Amen. One of us is an island unto ourselves. We are all connected to each other, no matter where we live in the world. Science tells us our DNA is the same across all races, yet we cause each other pain and grief. Today we are here to witness and recognize the victims of violence that we do to each other, sometimes with malice, sometimes by accident, sometimes in ignorance, and sometimes just by standing by and doing nothing. Throughout history, from the beginning of it, we have attacked each other. We have destroyed families, raped women and children, and put the land to ruin so it could not produce food. We have forced people, including children, to become warriors in conflicts they could not understand. We have brought disease and devastation. We have brought spiritual and physical desolation to each other and to the nations. We are just about at the end of our time together. And I wish I had at least another hour to say why Audrey and the Genocide Memorial are so important. The Genocide Memorial Service and Garden serves as a witness to violence committed against human beings because of war, greed, ethnic cleansing, slavery, gender bias, colonialism, and intolerance. While we can always call, count on Reverend Audrey to say a few words when we need her, what is really crucial is that she also knows how important it is for people to be able to speak to their own truths and has given space to many different people to tell their tales. A regular speaker at the memorial services is her friend, Dr. Jenna Jenigdar, an economics professor at universities here in the city of Edmonton. He is an eloquent advocate for the rights of LGBTQ Muslims to be accepted in their faith. There have been many articles written about the Genocide Memorial Service, but one was written by Dr. Junad in 2015 for the Edmonton Journal. He told his readers about the keynote speaker that year, who is a survivor of the 1994 Rwandan genocide. He also wrote about people from Korea that spoke about the physical abuse and loss of culture under Imperial Japan. Domina Lufama broke down in tears describing the horrors of rape in the Congo. Rabbi Monk wrote passionately from a book on the Holocaust. These are only some of the people that he had highlighted from that year's service. Many other groups and people have had a chance to speak and come together to remember and to strive for peace together. We have especially welcomed members of the Canadian Indigenous community and hope that this can be part of our reconciliation process. The service was created by Audrey and she has led it every year since, but she has welcomed many people from many faiths and experiences to tell their tales. I think that this is a beautiful Unitarian Universalist experience. Please remember that this was started by one woman in her front yard and it has evolved into an annual tradition to bring people together. Surely any congregation, large or small, can find some space to do the same. I hope you will take time to watch last year's service
which was a CUC national service. It was titled Witness, Hope, and Interconnectedness, and you'll be able to find it on YouTube. Reverend Audrey Brooks will be available for questions and answers during this Shining Lights webinar. Thank you.